can still hear you. Yes. Yes. All right. Welcome to another episode of Menu Heroes Digest. I'm Steven. Welcome back. And that's Jordan. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of Nintendo stuff, as well as some follow-ups from last week's uh, stories. Ooh. Wonderful. All right, so the first one we're going to start with is going to be rumors about remakes of the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages games. Which... Really hit my childhood there. Yeah, those... The Oracle of Ages was one of the first games I ever played. Yeah, and that's actually the first uh, Legend of Zelda handheld game I ever played. Actually, yeah, it's the very first Legend of Zelda game I ever played, ever, you know? I mentioned that uh, Wind Waker was the first console Zelda game I ever played. But it's like, in terms of get, understanding the, the whole feel of a Zelda game, like, it it was like, ages was like the, the my first experience to that world. Good. But yeah, it was a... Can I hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, Okay. Oracle of Ages and Link's Awakening were the two first games I played. And I played the Link's Awakening remake for the Switch and loved it. And um, if if they gave that treatment to the Oracle of Ages and Seasons games, I could die happy. Oh man, yeah, um, yeah. Link's Awakening was a great remake, and also uh, Link Between Worlds. Okay, that's not really a remake, but it's like a sequel to Link uh, Link to the Past. Like that was a great game. It was a good game. I'm thinking yeah. about revisiting it soon. And this is kind of a pipe dream, but uh, so when they originally made the Oracle games, they were going to make three. And in a perfect world, they'd be remaking the two and then making the third. So going full on Pokemon uh, format, just Uh two games and a third one, which would, you know, just be improvements of the the other two? Uh, No. Pretty much? Uh. No, it would have been a completely different game. Oh, even better. The person who uh, re- first reported on this rumor also mentioned that uh, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD are ready for the Switch. Don't know if that's true, but... Yes, I've been... Uh, okay, I'm just... Uh, I, I, you mentioned Wind Waker. Again, I get excited for that. Uh... Again, it's like I love that game, and uh, funny enough, it did not get a lot of praise when it first came out. Or it was like people were really hoping for like you know a PS2 or Xbox quality level, you know, a Zelda, a Zelda graphic game, and they decided to go with a more cartoony style to it. I loved it. I love the style. I love the whole look of the world, and you were sailing through these the, the the vast oceans and on these and going to these islands, you know. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. You know, I, and part of me wishes they would bring at least some of that back in the new games. I always say that if Wind Waker and Twilight Princess had switched uh, graphics, Wind Waker would have been uh, taken a lot more seriously because it's a dark game. It is. It's all about like. The 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 o- like the ocean sinking, uh, a high high rule, you know, and the, the like the whole redeads like that alone is scary. Okay. I got nightmares when I first experienced towards them, and yeah, the whole Rito village with like, you know, this this giant little parasite thing that exists in the in the volcano like that's that was pretty scary, and. 
that one island where a giant fish lived on, like, that was just wiped out. Uh-huh. We never saw what that island was like. We never saw what the people were like. We never saw the big danger. It just was gone. You know. Also, I'm going to try and not say the, the two words, yeah, no, uh-huh. a lot. Because I mentioned in the comments last time. And I say that every sentence last time. You know? I did it again. Ah. But yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one, which is also Zelda related. Sure. And that is that people have gotten uh, Four Swords Adventures. Well, okay, so a little background. Four Swords Adventures is a GameCube game that is single player and multiplayer. For the multiplayer, you need four Game Boys that physically link up to the console in order to play it. Um, Yeah, this was still a time where Nintendo, uh, mostly Game Freak, but a lot of Nintendo, was very uncertain about online play, or they felt like people should go outside and meet people and meet friends, so they should grab their Game Boys, their Game Cubes together and link up. You know, it's... uh It's still kind of that way because you can tell they're not doing a whole lot in terms of fixing their online stuff, but uh, definitely more open to online than they were 10, 15 years ago. It's funny you say that because the GameCube actually had internet. You just had to buy a separate, uh, like, module. Okay, you were you were cutting in and out there. What were you trying to say? Oh, uh, I said it was funny that you said that about the internet because the GameCube had uh, limited internet. You just needed a special add-on. Are you there? Okay, I like at the very end of that, but I I, I think I get you, I think you were saying internet add-on accessories. I get you for the GameCube, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, there's finally official, you know, not Nintendo supported, but uh, official Dolphin emulator support for the Game Boy Advance. Meaning that, like, you, me, Kim, and Xander could get together and play Four Swords Adventures using an emulator. We can take this all the way back to 2004. Yeah! I mean, Four Swords... Then we'll watch Incredibles afterwards, right? (laughs) FSA is one of my favorite Zelda games, too. Oh, no, that's great, great. Yeah, Four Swords, you know, uh, like, it should be in consider the top ten best Legend Zelda games. You know, like, I, I, I truly mean that, you know. Uh-huh. I don't know if we'll ever do a top ten of any franchise, but if you need me to write one, wouldn't mind doing an episode about that. Okay, I will keep that in mind. And you know what that means. I'll never think about it again. You'll just have to keep on me about it. Yeah, I didn't catch any of that. Um, I swear, my internet's fine. It's so I should be good on my end. All right. Give me a moment, and we'll uh, we'll we'll take okay. a short break. All right, we are back after our break. I had to fix the internet because it breaks. You were close. Oh my god. He's doing he's in this whole <laughs> Professor Oak uh phase. Hey. Yeah, I don't mean to be just uh a gen oneer. By all means, I'm open to all gens. But come on, Professor Oak, 
He was a legend. He was OG. Gen 1 is overrated. I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> you know, but still, but it's, come on. You got you to love Professor Oak. Of anything from Gen 1, you got to love Professor Oak. Come I, on. I actually do not like Professor Oak because of the anime. He was kind of a big jerk to Ash. Oh, why did I even bother? Uh-huh. All right, so... That was also a, a Professor Oak joke. Uh-huh. So, speaking about, you know, PhDs, let's move on to our next story. Dr. Mario World. Did you ever play this, uh, Jordan? Uh, Dr. Mario itself, no, but it, it, it's pretty much similar to Tetris and other, like, Bejeweled, other, like, puzzle, like, little uh, block puzzle games, you know, yeah. and... You know, I, it looks fun, it looks cute, but, um, nah, this is the one I've missed, you know? My experience in Mario games is not wide. Of course, I've gone back to play the old Mario games, like, don't get me wrong. But, it's not, I do like them, but I'm not super into the Mario franchise. So, Dr. Mario was something I'd ap- ever sought after, you know? Yeah. Besides, we all know that Paper Mario, a Thousand Year Doors, is the best Mario game ever. So anyway, no, cost, no contest. Uh-huh. It is a good game. So, Dr. Mario World was one of Nintendo's mobile attempts at, you know, one of Nintendo's attempts at mobile games. Which, for the most part, That's... they haven't done bad with. Yeah, but also, no one really talks about it. Like, yeah, this one was like the even in, in the worst. It's just that again with the mobile games that are known and infamous, Nintendo never broke out from that. Nothing, nothing from Nintendo, a mobile game from Nintendo, broke out as like, oh, you gotta play this game, or you know, most people would have Pokemon it on their Go. phones. Okay, okay, that's the one. All right, you got me there. I'm just, I'm saying what you think of as a mobile game. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Right, I'm trying to say you know, uh-huh. I am not gonna be Raijin, Okay, no one wants to be Raijin. Nobody. So what's happening with this game is, uh, support will it will will end November first, which you know usually wouldn't be an issue except that. This game relies on servers that are going to be shut down. Meaning the game will be completely unplayable. Well, that's another Doctor Who's fallen in the line of duty. (laughs) Duty. Yeah, apparently Minecraft Earth was also killed off. Oh, really? A Minecraft game got axed? Huh. Yeah, and it wasn't even out that long. It's kind of a shame. Because it seemed unique compared to the other, you know, Pokemon Go wannabes. Yeah, you thought, like, if there's any franchise that's close to Pokemon, Pokemon popularity, it would be Minecraft. So hearing that that game got axed, like... Whoa, what? Minecraft's like, that, that one was of a, the... That was honest shock to me. Yeah, Minecraft's like one of the, uh, what's the word? Highest selling games. Uh, well, yeah, I, I read on a chat, uh, on a chart somewhere that there was like a top ten most profitable, most the the franchises that had the that the highest, you know, that that uh, its value was how high they are, and it's like yeah, Pokemon, Minecraft. Yeah, you know, those are the two on top. There's something else that also was close to there. You know, may I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, Minecraft. Maybe Mario. Minecraft is the number one best-selling game with 200 million copies sold. 
Didn't uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate get close to that, or is it is it at least somewhere near that number? I'm looking. It's it's the forty first. Real uh, okay, maybe because I'm looking. I mean, again, I looked it up. All these things. It was a while ago. Uh-huh. It probably was like the most highest selling fighting game. That's probably why I thought. Well, surely, Smash Ultimate must be close to that. Must be somewhere near that the, that chart, right? Uh huh. All right. Uh, if you guys heard that, I am very sorry. I don't know what's going on down upstairs. Uh-huh. I'm here in my basement trying to record this episode, and there's a lot of noise coming from upstairs, probably from my dog Thor. Uh, so apologies to that if you hear it. You're all good. All right. So um, we were we mentioned Pokemon because it was a popular game. So we're going to segue yep. into uh, a new rumor that's circulating, which is a live-action Pokemon series being developed by Netflix. Yes, and it's interesting that Netflix is doing this instead of Warner Brothers, but uh, I'll let you go into more detail. Uh, it is interesting that, you know, Warner Brothers, that it's not an HBO Max thing. Because, um, you know, Warner Brothers, like you said. But I, I'm not sure how... How true this is going to be because there used to be uh, rumors about a live action Zelda series and nothing ever came of that I remember in high school like a trailer came out that was on IGN's website but then they revealed that they made that as an April Fool's prank Yep. but I knew some people at, the, at my high school being like oh man it's coming let us know that they're finally doing a live action movie. It's going to be awesome. And it never came true. Yeah, Nintendo's been really. They've held their intellectual property close to their heart. And yet, Mario and Donkey Kong were in pixels. Mm hmm. How close to you, the properties were you then, Nintendo? Huh? Well, you know. Probably closer to Adam Sandler's pockets. <laughs> Cameos are one thing, but a full-blown, like, movie or series is, uh, that's an entirely different thing. Like, Detective Pikachu, um, that was a great movie, and it, it was a risk for Nintendo. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I do love that movie, uh. I've told this to you in, uh, in private that my favorite, you know, double features to do any night is did it did it Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I always divided which one I do first. Would I do the one where the video game character comes into the real world, or the one where we're all we're all living in this, you know, you know, this fantasy world of animals of uh, superpowered animals. Uh, hmm. But a great double feature to watch. Or to, to do. And that's something we'll have to do sometime when I'm there. Oh yes, and um, Speaking I don't know if you're about to cover the showrunner. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can, you can go because this is going to be off topic. Well, I was going to say like uh, the supposed showrunner they're going for is uh, the Lucifer co-showrunner uh, Joe Henderson. I'll be honest with you, like, I've heard some good things from Lucifer, but also I've heard some bad things from the last season. So I don't know if, like, this is a guy who's been involved with the earlier parts of Lucifer or the newest season. Um, that does give me some pause. Uh-huh. But, uh, again, I think having a full-on Pokemon series, I think, could be super fun. You know, some people who were hoping for a more traditional Pokemon story for the for the Tetepiju movie, they can get that for the show. And that'd be actually more closer to the game because it's going it's uh, an adventure long you know, several hours of exploring, you know, this world of this region, you know, which you know you can't do in a movie. Right anyway. And I mean Netflix has, you know, they've made some pretty good game adaptations. 
Like I know yep, the Castlevania. Yeah. And I know The Witcher isn't just strictly games. It's a book series and such. Yeah. But it's also very popular. Um, oh yeah. And I will like uh I have Audible and we're not sponsored by Audible. Don't give me please do not think we're Audible, sponsored by Audible. We could Hashtag if they'd non sponsor us. Yeah, yeah, we're not we're not sellouts here. <laughs> no, we're sellouts. Be. But uh <laughs> Anyway, but, continue. Uh, I, I'll say, like, um, I am going to try and, like, listen to the audiobook of the first Witcher book and also the first Doom book because that movie's coming out soon and it, the trailers look amazing. You said Doom? Yeah, Dune. 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 Okay, I was like, Doom? I didn't know there were books about No, they, they, tried, they tried that in the early 2000s with The Rock and Carl Urban, which uh -huh. today probably would have been cool, but that was before they were really stars, so that doesn't count. Uh -huh. Yeah, speaking of movies and stuff you should watch, have you seen Hamilton? Well, of course. I, I Didn't we do our first episode with me making a uh, Hamilton, with me singing a song for Hamilton, and you got mad because we're going to lose you know, ad, your ad revenue or something? I don't think I actually le legitimately got mad, but um, I think I was just... Uh, mad because I didn't get it. No, I just uh, I've been listening to the soundtrack, which is basically the same thing as watching it, because like the entire thing is just sung. It's amazing. I'd say like you know seeing the version on Disney Plus where it they do actually have like cameras in certain angles, which they wouldn't do in a regular showing to make it more dramatic and it feels more like a movie. Is I'd say uh, experience worth getting. It is, you know, yeah. Of course, I listen to it the, the the all the songs in my car, but uh, again, it there is like it. I would consider like the Disney Plus Hamilton stage, whatever you want to call it. I would consider that to be, you know, a feature length movie. You know, just it's all on a stage. Yeah, it's. I, I can't believe I waited so long to listen to it. All right. So to, we... to be fair, I didn't get into it right away, but it was like the whole debacle of 2016 or the near the end of 2016 and um, yeah. with things happening, I needed something to uplift my spirits, something hopeful and, you know. Uh, but I'll, we won't get to that. We'll, uh, we'll move on. All right, so now we got to go to a uh, serious segment, Gabin with Jordan, talking about oh boy, Activision Blizzard. So we'll start with the uh, the article you sent me, and then I found another article that you might want to take a look at. Now we're sticking with Activision Blizzard, right? Yes. Because I did send you other ones, but... Uh... Yes. Um, well, here's a follow-up from last week's Just Gavin with Jordan. If you were uh, hoping for a little lighter, lighter news or some more whimsical, but you're in the wrong segment because uh, we're we are once again back in the trenches with uh, the Activision and Blizzard employees, and they were not too happy with Activision Blizzard, the official statement by the CEOs, and like. The, probably the uh, legal team at Activision Blizzard that's basically denounced the whole state of California's lawsuit against them. And uh, several, uh, about, like, several employees, like, walked out, uh, did a whole walkout in protest of Activision Blizzard's whole attitude of this whole situation. And uh, as I said, the walkout is getting even more support as I'm looking at the update right now. Uh, I'm trying to look at the exact number of employees there was out there. Again, I'm looking at the article right now. And I said, uh, the statement of intent given last week's statement from Activision Blizzard, Inc. and their legal uh, counsel regarding the DFEA's lawsuit, as well as the sub 
subsequent internal statement from Francis T Townsend, and the many stories shared by current and former employees of Activision Blizzard. Since we believe that our values are empl uh, as employees are not being accurately reflected in the wor words and actions of our leadership. As current Activision Blizzard employees, we are holding a walkout to call on the executive le leadership team to work with us on the following demands in order to improve conditions for employees and the company, especially women in a in particular, women of color and transgender women, non-binary people, and others, marginalized groups. An end of mandatory uh, uh, part one. An end of mandatory arbitration cl uh, clauses in in all employee contracts current and future arbitration yeah. clauses protect uh, abusers uh, 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 protect abusers and limit the ability to victims to seek re re reinstitution restitution. the adoption restitution it's oh, so i am do you, oh. do you want me to read this part <laughs> uh maybe it's best i again i apologize guys i'm trying my best to Hold on to the serious because this is a very serious issue. I'm trying my best to, you know, bring it to light, but also, yeah. I get you. I get I, you. Uh, my my tongues get twisted, you know, and I, you know, there ain't much. I I wish to be more. Ga I wish there's more Jordan Gavin, but uh, Stephen, you might want to take this over because, uh, yeah, I want to make sure this is done justice. So, uh, just to be clear, this is the uh, the employee's statement of intent. Um, the first part was an end to mandatory arbitration clauses in all employee contracts, current and future, because arbitration clauses protect abusers and limit the ability of victims to seek restitution. Uh, the second part is the adoption of recruiting, interviewing, hiring, and promotion policies designed to improve representation among employees at all levels, agreed upon by employees in a company-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion organization. Current practices have led to women, in particular women of color and transgender women, non-binary people, and other marginalized groups that are vulnerable to gender discrimination not being hired fairly for new roles when compared to men. The third part is publication of data on relative compensation, including equity grants and profit sharing, promotion rates, and salary ranges for employees of all genders and ethnicities at the company. Current practices have led to aforementioned groups not being paid or promoted fairly. And the fourth is to empower a company-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion tax task force to hire a third party to audit ABK's reporting structure, HR department, and executive staff. It is imperative to identify how current systems have failed to prevent employee harassment and to propose new solutions to address these issues. And um, an update that I, I think is important but is also kind of an empty gesture is that um, at, since the walkout has gained support from around the world, uh, Blizzard has offered the employees who are participating paid time off. Well, couldn't have said better myself because I tried and I failed. It's okay, buddy. Thank you very much for doing that, <laughs> doing that right. Um, So I was trying to find the exact number of how many employees, because I think it is important to know, because some people will try and like neg uh, negate or try and like undermine the importance of this walkout and say, ah, oh, just a few bad apples or just people just trying to make a fuss over nothing. Because again, the legal team behind Activision Blizzard tried their best to like make it like it's not a big deal or the case wasn't true and the state of California is wasting their time or wasting valuable resources and thankfully the employees stood up and say no you're the one that's lying the state of California and their legal team they're the only ones listening to us and giving us a chance to speak out and we're if you won't listen to us then we'll walk out then we will not you know code or help buffer any more your games you know and um, so I, I said also part of the uh, article I have not found yeah. an exact number because um, I don't think there's been one reported but I do know that there's more than a thousand employees who signed a letter uh, in relation to the walkout which means that even if there weren't like a thousand people who did the walkout 
there's more than a thousand employees alone who supported it. And that's not including everyone outside of the company. Yeah, and there's probably videos out there of empl for either employees or former employees, you know, at the protests, like with signs, you know. And it points very clear, Activision Blizzard, you know, we're not going to let you keep doing this anymore. Yeah. And uh, I sent you a related link about how Activision hired a firm to review their HR policies. And that's the reason why I said the paid time off was an empty gesture. Well, last week we didn't have a we didn't have a whole lot of time or like all the updates weren't available, but like as I was saying, Activision Blizzard, their legal team sent out a statement saying, you know, denouncing the state of California's like lawsuit, saying the whole thing is falsified, the whole thing is a waste of time and the claims are not true it's like this does not shock me about them hiring you know union busting firms you know this unfortunately is what you see with many companies you know i'm about to jump into another company that's not really game related but we this just broke this week of disney like making claims that scott johansson you know she doesn't need they don't need to follow the contract or, you know, Scott Johansson's the one causing trouble because, like, uh, pandemic, you know, coronavirus and all that. And, you know, she's already have, like, $20 million already, and she's causing trouble for us. When the truth is what, what she and Kevin Feige and other people at, 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 within Disney are saying is, no, you broke the contract. You promised her this much money. You're not following up on that promise. And now there's a legal team now going against you. And, you know, you know, Stephen, it just kind of, I mean, it's not shocking, but it's always just puzzling that these big companies ca can have all this wealth and have all these resources, but still n never, never once thinks, maybe I shouldn't piss off, I shouldn't upset my employees so they can keep working for me and making sure we can, I can turn a profit and they, you know, keep their job and you know, everything. They're always, so these companies keep thinking, you know, I'm big corporation. You do what I say and you like it. But it shouldn't be no shocker. But like, if you keep having the attitude, people are going to like push back. People are going to fight back. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a lot of people, a lot of businesses are like, uh, we can't open because everybody quit. Boo-hoo. We don't have loyal employees. But it's like, if people are making more on unemployment, that is not their fault. It is the fault of the employer, and it is their job to offer competitive wages, or else people aren't going to work for them. Why would you work for pennies? Um, and jumping back to the anti-union thing, so the company mm -hmm. they hired is uh, Wilmer Hale, which is the same law for firm that is preventing Amazon's workers from unionizing. Basically, what they did at Amazon was they spread uh, anti-union rhetoric, and uh, in particular, there was a slogan called uh, Do It Without Dues, which this article says suggests that the proposed union was only interested in taking workers' fees without offering any substantial support. The thing about unions is, most of the time, they are very useful, they protect workers, but yes, they do take dues. However, time and time again, unions have shown that they have a place in society. Um, like the weekend? The only reason we have the weekend is because of unions. Exactly, Stephen. Yeah. Like. And the saddest part is, is that most people in this country, whatever, like, political stamp stands you have on it, we all agree we should, like, I, I would assume we would all agree that we should all be treated fairly, you know, that we're here to work when we're at, a, at our workplace. Everyone should be treated fairly, you know, be given respect, be paid at, at what they're due. And yet, like, like you know, uh, union busting firms like Wilmer Hale, 
which does sound like a nefarious organization, uh, like a, a secret uh, group that would like, you know, like, like somehow like go after like the kids at a cul-de-sac or whatever, uh-huh. or like uh, mow down like an old building or a old house that, that, that the, uh, the old nice, la- old nice lady who helps raise the kids. You, you know, it's like Wilmer Hale sounds shady. It sounds nasty on its own. But my point being that, Again, the unions for Amazon should have been a surefire thing because, uh, yeah, you know, everyone should take care of each other. Everyone should make sure that you know when they work, they are you know they are still they they still have their rights and they are still treated fairly. But they were able to implement a bunch of like you know tactics like I've like certain videos on TikTok and YouTube of being like. What are you talking about? Amazon's fine. It's so fun to work here at Amazon. Oh, look at the conveyor belts. Isn't that cool? And it, I, that should have been such a see-through that they were doing everything to manipulate people into thinking that everything's fine at uh, Amazon, which we all know it isn't. Like, we've all heard you know horror stories from within Amazon warehouses, and yet they still manage to convince courts that you know. We don't need unions. We are fine, you know, all that stuff online. It's all it's all false. It's all just a bunch of ups, you know, upset, you know, former employees. And you know, it would break my heart if the same thing happened with Activision Blizzard. And but again, they're doing everything they can to stop this from happening because if this happens, then this will happen. Then several employees at other companies will start fighting back and start, you know, demanding, you know, be treated fairly, be treated like human beings. All right. Which is something that should already be happening, but, you know, I, I know, I, I <laughs> man, you get me started, I I just oh, keep I going. Know. I may not be able to, like, quote uh, articles well, but I'm, I, I got my, I because I got so many words in my head, I got to let out, you know, the people need to hear. You got that fire. You need to talk less. I spit off fire, Stephen. Spit off fire. Smile more. Don't let them know what I you're against or what you're for. Okay, now I realize what you're. About. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good on you. Find it back. Because I was thinking, like, are you thinking a Joker reference or a Hamilton reference? <laughs> like my brain just kind of went to both. I don't even really like that Joker movie. It's good, yes. You know, Walking Phoenix is a great performance, but I think the movie overall is. It was. It was a like, look how look how smart we are. Look how look how deep we are. And how we're sick of society. It's like we're not really saying much. Or the like, what's the end that again? Like. <laughs> the Joker. I don't even think even they know. The Joker movie was just like the king of comedy and cosplay. Exactly. All right, yeah. so let's move on to our last segment. You know, take a breath and talk about Dark Souls. <laughs> Those are two things you don't put in the same sentence, there, Stephen. So this person, uh. Super Luis 64 beats Dark Souls with a Pizza Hut pizza. I mean, I for a second I thought I was going to say Super Luigi 64, and I think that would have been a perfect just, you know, synergy. <laughs> or whatever that word I'm thinking of. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, this is awesome. Yeah, so basically, he uses uh. a special board um, with some wires that were plugged into each pizza slice, and each button, or each pizza slice was a button. Um, and it's it's crazy because somehow he made it so in order to mention his ten gallon hat, he had to take a bite of actual pizza. And uh, what did you say? I said you forgot to mention his t- big ten gallon hat. I'm looking at his picture on oh, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a big old ten gallon hat. Yeah. Where's hiding his big old brain? <laughs> you did but done, Dark Souls. Oh my God! Nice. That Nickelodeon episode is never going to end. We'll bring up Nickelodeon every single episode. 
But no, this is a uh, this is pretty impressive. And to be honest, it, it solves an industry wide problem of getting grease on your controllers because the controllers already have grease, so you don't have to worry about cleaning anything. Yeah. I mean, this reminds me of, I mean, you know, I've always saw like a real life potato clock once where somebody or a teacher actually put like, you know, the um, connectors into potato and had it power, you know, a clock. I think even they even tried getting a whole like row of potatoes to like power a camera for like five minutes. Uh huh. And like the video wasn't recording, but it's like, this is like the next level. This is, let's get anything doughy or soft that it's still edible. We can still power it to something, or we're gonna use it to control something. Like this is. I'm pretty sure somebody's beating. Yeah, you know, I tip my hat. I tip my. You tip your ten gallon hat. Yes, I was. I was gonna say tip my giant dip dim a hat to Sir, Sir Super Luis sixty four. Yeah. You know? You dim it done the impossible, du uh, doggone it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody's beaten Dark Souls with potatoes before. Yeah, well, pieces are better than potatoes. Yeah, that's just science. Potatoes. <laughs> Did I actually say potatoes? I, no, I, no, no, you said potatoes. I, I said potatoes. Okay. okay. I said potato, you say potato. 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 All right. Well, okay. that's going to be about all the all the news we got today. Had some technical issues, but I think we got it solved. Um, I'm glad we ended on uh, Pizza Controller, Beating Dark Souls. Pizza I think that was a good way to end it. Yes, it was a pizza. great way. Go get some pizza. Yeah, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten yet. so. Uh, Same. I'm about to go eat a yeah. sub from Subway. I think we got chicken tenders in the oven. Nice. I was spelling chicken tenders, so yeah, uh, I'm 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 digging deep, or I'm. You getting them tendies? Yeah, chicken nuggies. All right. Until next time, stay cool. See you soon. <laughs>